All right, hey guys, so we've got a special guest on the channel today, Tommy Tabaji, is that how you pronounce it? Tabaji, yeah. Tabaji, yeah, okay, close, well, close, close enough, yeah, close enough. Close enough. Oh my God, I probably already are subscribed to him, but if you're not, please subscribe to this channel. He has brought the Runcam Hybrid, and I know a lot of you guys saw my video a few days ago on the Tarsier V2. We're gonna compare the Runcam Hybrid to the Tarsier V2 in this video today. All right, I am uh, recording? recording. All right, here we go. So what do you think of the FPV feed? Well, so I'm, I'm more, I'm coming from an Eagle, right? I'm a huge Eagle fan. And I think this is actually pretty, pretty close to that. Does it look a little bit too saturated to you? Um, it does, but let me let me line this with by saying that I'm colorblind. <laughs> oh, oh, for real? <laughs> yeah, I, I am. So so colors aren't that big of a deal to me. What I look for more is like crispness in the image and being able to see a lot of detail. Um, and right now, I'd say this is this is pretty good. I I definitely rock this. I'd I'd feel comfortable uh, doing some of the more like bando or, or you know massive light change kind of stuff. Yeah, this is, I think, one of my favorite cameras. Uh, this this feed and then the Rattel from Caddx is also one of my favorite. I think they're pretty similar in terms of the uh, color reproduction and the sensor. Yeah, I like this. So you're going to go underneath the shade right now. You're going under the shade here. Yeah, see, that's, gonna... that's pretty good. I'd say that's really good. I, I hate it when a camera takes way too long to, to for the exposure to change here. But yeah, this the, is pretty the good. Exposure changes are pretty quick on this camera. So what happens if you aim directly at the sun? All right, so I'll go right here. Oh yeah. Looking right at the sun right here. Oh yeah, that, that handles that like a champ, I'd say. And uh, yeah. no problem doing acro with this guy. Yeah, I like the uh, the field of view looks nice too. I definitely prefer seeing more of things so that I know where I'd like to go. Yeah. But the light to, I think the light to dark uh, transitions are pretty good in this camera. You can see down here in the shadows, a lot of detail. Yeah, definitely. It's in the ground. So, definitely no problems uh, flying it. One of my favorite cameras, just in my opinion. No, this looks good. It looks like you'd be able to see, uh, you know, a decent amount of, uh, of detail in terms of like scraggle and twigs and things like yeah. that. So this is normally not why I says I'm I'm just kind of improvising here. I don't normally fly this on my reviews. And this, oh, that's kind fine. Of, kind of just gone all over the place. Here. No, that's fine. Have fun. I'm not, I'm I'm totally not gonna follow this line. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. The, the the lines that was at the very beginning. This is this is all improv, improvisation now. I'm just running the battery out. For sure. Yeah, it looks like when you go towards the sky, like there it. It doesn't even look like it's trying to manage that at all. It just looks pretty seamless. Yeah. Other cameras, you, you you'll notice it'll, a massive it'll struggle. change. Yeah. 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 It'll struggle. But I'd say this is pretty good. Looks like there's a little bit of like sharpening, artifacting yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Uh, when see, you're staying still. See right here under the table. You can see like all the details under the table. Yeah. But overall, I I I'd rock this for sure. Yeah. All right. There you go. So, all right, here we go. Taking off in three, two, one. You know, right off the bat, I, I, I gotta say that I think, I think it's a little too sharp. I guess yeah, is the word. Yeah, sharpening is a. It, it's a bit much. High. Like right off the bat. Now, again, this is stock settings, but I think out of the box, I think I like the uh, the Cat X FPV feed better. This kind of reminds me of the, I don't know if you've flown the uh, Oscar camera, the Phoenix. No, the Phoenix. Yeah, the, yeah. it looks a little bit like that, but the contrast is a lot higher. Now, they did say that it's the same as the Runcam Racer. Uh, I haven't tried oh, the Racer. Oh, yeah, okay, no, yeah. But the Racer is similar to the Nano Racer, and that one is got yeah, pretty high contrast. So, I mean, aiming at the sun looks pretty good. Uh, what it looks like over here. So plenty of detail. Yeah, so that's good. Still has plenty of detail. I feel comfortable uh, flying into the trees here.
But uh, I mean, overall, I'm wondering, I'm hoping that I can just dial the sharpening down and the contrast is Probably, really, yeah. really, really high for my taste. Yeah. But I feel like I can see uh, a little bit more detail on the uh, Tarsi AFDs in the shadows. The shadows are One too dark minute. in this camera. I agree. And in, for me personally, detail is highest priority over color. Especially in the shadows. Right. Because you, you can only fly as good as you can see. Yep. Yeah, we're in the, the shadows here. And yeah, I'd, I'd it's say... It's not bad, but you can definitely see more details on the RCA in the shadows. Let's go see what happens when you pop up and look down into... Yeah, see how it's just really dark? Yeah, and you just kind of have to there. guess. Wow, nice. <laughs> so I... I I like to be able to see through those shadows because obviously if I'm doing something like this, I want to know where I'm going. Nice. All right, well, let's just finish off the rest of this battery and I'll bring it in and then uh, we'll review the footage. Cool. So again, that's completely stock settings out of the box. Um, there's, I would like to think that there's uh, some some adjustability there to dial that back down as far as the cat, uh, not the CADEX, but the run cam. Uh, but out of the box, I, I, I think I like the, the CADEX a little bit better. What about you? I think so. Now, to change the settings on the hybrid, do you, I, I know for the HD, you use the QR code like the run cam 5. How do you change the FPV settings? So, so I'm glad that you brought that up. So that's a pretty cool thing that, that RunCam is doing. To change the HD settings, you use an app on your phone. Uh, I won't bring it up right now, but you use an app on your phone, you pick the setting that you want, and it generates a QR code that you then throw in front of the HD camera. And you just push a button, it's like a three second hold, and then it'll recognize it. To change the FPV cam settings is just like anything else. You hook up uh, the, the little joystick controller, okay. or uh, you can hook it up to your flight controller if your flight controller... Okay, UART uh, controls. Right, UART control. Got it. Is CADEX the same way? Uh, yeah, it has the same same features. You can also use your phone to change the settings for the HD camera. It doesn't use a QR code, just a traditional Wi-Fi app. Oh, okay. Yeah, like, uh, so so the CADEX has a built-in Wi-Fi chip? It has a built-in Wi-Fi chip, and you just have to turn it on, and then you connect with the, the CADEX app, and you ah. download it from the Play Store. And it, it's, it's like kind of like the way the old run cams used to use yeah. the, the run cam app and connect to your Wi-Fi. It's pretty similar. So that's probably why the CADEX still has two boards. Possibly. I mean, there's a lot of... There's a lot of processing going on there. You got an HD camera and you've got uh, FPV analog camera, and it's, just, it's got to process both images, right? Right. So, right. Obviously, I'm I'm really surprised that the the RunCam hybrid is able to put an all-in-one board. That's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Well, well, and I think it's starting to make a lot more sense. So, so the RunCam forgoes the ease. Well, I wouldn't even say that. I, I'd say the QR code is actually still pretty easy. You just pull yeah, up yeah. on your phone and you, you aim at it, uh, but no Wi-Fi, and and so you get the single board. I think I think I would prefer to have the single board and deal with you know, doing it via QR code, because it's yeah. not that difficult. Plus you save weight too. Plus you save weight, absolutely. All right, so uh, let's go compare the HD footage now. All right. All right, so this is the RunCam hybrid, and uh, I mean, field of view I think is is it's good enough. I mean, there's definitely no GoPro Super View, but mm. I, I like the image quality though. Um, and it looks like it's just kind of blurry just at the very edges, which you'd probably expect. The color reproduction kind of reminds me of the RunCam 5. It wouldn't surprise me if it's based on the same sensor technology. Yeah, let's see what happens when we we'll start looking the sun. towards the sun here. The ground does get a little dark, but it's still, it's still, still, it's see still plenty. really crisp. Yeah, yeah, you can still see a lot of detail, which is an interesting. And let's look at the sun. There we go. Not too bad. It doesn't yeah. go totally dark. No, it does. It it doesn't have any massive change to adjust for it. Now we're looks looking at the ground, really and that balanced. looks not bad at all, actually. I, I'm I'm so surprised that this is the quality that we're getting out of a tiny little 4K. Now we're in the in the shade, and the, I, yeah. it looks like you still see plenty. And the background isn't as overexposed. No, you still see a lot of detail on the brightness, the bright areas when you're in shadow. Uh, and, and so those moves too are huge to me because that is really stressful on the camera with the light changes when you do tricks like that. Yeah. Uh, so it's good to see that this it's is able a, to keep up with it. It's adjusting very quickly. Yeah. Uh, 
Not bad, not bad. I like it. You can definitely see a little bit of the lens distortion. Yeah. But hey, there, GoPro but... has the same things too, yeah, yeah. so it's... Uh, and I think for the most part, most people are looking for uh, something as close to Super U as possible. The FOV on this is 145. 145? 145 okay. degrees, so... That's... So, the advertised uh, field of view on the hybrid is uh, 5 degrees less than than the, the Tarsier, V2 V2. Tarsier, but 5 degrees more than the V1 Tarsier. Okay, so yeah. this is like that happy medium yeah. in, in between. between for Tarsier. Nice move. Yeah. I believe GoPro Superview is officially 170, so... Oh, really? That's, 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 that's massive. Yeah, that's just crazy. But but that, uh, you know, they also have the patent on that Superview, so... Yep. Okay, so let's go yep. check out the Canex uh, Tarsier. V2. All right, here we go. Then we're looking at the Tarsier. So now we're at the Tarsier V2. I think right off the bat, it's a slightly brighter exposure. It's a little bit brighter, yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit overexposed when you come out of shadow. Yeah, so if you're looking at a really bright background, it gets a tad yeah. overexposed. Yeah. It looks like the overall lens distortion is pretty much the same. Pretty similar. I wouldn't be able to tell you which one is wider. Just, yeah. I would have to look at the side by side, but um, I'm not exactly sure how the field of view compares vertically. But it looks a little mm -hmm. bit wider vertically on this one versus the. It looks fiber. like this also has a little bit of the lens flaring that happens on yeah. the run cam. The run exactly. cam has that seven layered glass, which I think is. I think the Tarsi has a pretty much a similar. Same thing. Similar I'll seven say. layer yeah. glass. Yeah. I do feel like the run cam gets a little bit more of those lens flares. Let's see how it looks when you're going down to the shadows. Yeah, shadows still look fairly dark, but I don't think I don't think the hybrid was any better. Let's see what happens with some light changes here. I, I do like the fact that you can see a lot of details in the shadows. Mm -hmm. You can see the grass there, and it's... the light transitions a little bit slower in terms of the adjustments. You can see that how the background oh, yeah. gets yeah. more. When you're coming out of shadow right there, yeah. it's it's a little bit blown out. I didn't notice it until you until you no. pointed that out. The run cam uh, uh, when you're looking at when you're in coming out of when you're coming from shadows into bright areas, the run cam seems to have a little bit more it's more balanced in terms of the exposure and and when you're coming into it. Yeah. yeah. It adjusts oh, here it, I crash. it adjusts <laughs> a little bit faster. I mean, just looking at a still image, though, I, I think they're on par, yeah. you know, when it comes to just a, a still image. Okay. Well, so all that said, I, it, I, don't, I don't know, I don't even, judging from just a footage, just from the HD footage, I don't know if I could pick one over the other. Like a uh, run cam just for the fact that it can adjust exposure really so. fast. But then FPV, like feed, Stock out of the box. I think I'm gonna have to go with Cat X on 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 this one. I don't know. It's close. I think it's gonna. It really depends on the person and everyone. It's very subjective, right? So everyone's got a different opinion of what they like. Some people are gonna like the, the run cam image better, and some people are gonna like the Cat X image. Better. That's true. I'm, and I'm colorblind, so. No. I think it really depends. <laughs> so just to drive home the point that everyone's gonna have different uh, a different perspective. Yeah. I think build wise, I definitely would go with the run cam just because it's got a single board that you have to deal with over the, the yeah. two board and yeah, I that think also that's, a, that's a definite advantage so you save some weight and but the camera unit is bigger too so we'll have to see what the i'm not that's exactly true. sure what that's the weight true. differences are you know what, but in terms of like fitting into certain builds one board is definitely going to be better than two that's true yeah. that's true then we'll go in Was that me? <laughs> <laughs> 